Welcome back to Chasing Redline. This is going to be a multi-part series to help you get your bike ready for riding season. Today we are going to do an air filter swap on a Victory Cross Country. There are several methods of doing this, so I'm going to walk you through the one that I've found to be the easiest and doesn't require a full removal of the fuel tank. For most, this is going to be easier, and that's especially if you don't have an extra set of hands nearby. Regardless of which method you choose, be sure to do this on a cool bike. Never perform this work while the engine is hot. Another tip before we get started, the job is easier if you run most of the fuel out of the tank. This removes most of the weight while manipulating the tank and reduces the chance of a mishap. For this job, you're going to need the following. A 4mm and 6mm Allen wrench. A 10mm socket with ratchet. Zip ties, you'll actually need three of these. An additional tool that makes this job easier is a set of cutting pliers. The air filter I'll be installing is the Victory Performance Filter, part number 2878041. This is a cleanable air filter that was discontinued by Polaris. If you search hard enough, you can still find them though. And most importantly, you're going to need a bottle opener and a beverage of your choice. We are into March now, so I've chosen an Irish Red by Boulevard. Start by removing the cheese wedge to reveal the fuel line. Remove the side covers by pulling them outward, releasing from the rubber grommets. Remove the seat by removing the two fasteners from the front sides of the seat with a 6mm Allen wrench. Then lift the front of the seat and slide forward to disengage the rear tab. If you have a cross country tour with a heated seat, you will need to disconnect the power to the seat by simply flipping it over, disconnecting the wiring, and proceeding with removal. For the tank, we will want to start by removing the ground wire. For this, you will need a 10 millimeter socket. Once that is complete, we will remove the two fuel tank fasteners with a 6 millimeter Allen wrench. Be careful not to lose the grommets both on the inside and outside of the mounting point. Now, some will do this without disconnecting the fuel line. I like to disconnect the fuel line so I'm not putting any unnecessary tension on the line or the fuel nipple. Get yourself a rag and stuff it under the fuel line connection. This is to catch any fuel that is captured in the line. This space is a little tight so you'll need to do your best to get your hands in there. Compress and release the tabs on both sides of the fuel line and pull it out. A little fuel will come out of the line but the goal is to catch it on your rag. Lift the rear of the tank up slightly and disconnect the fuel pump electrical wiring. With a set of cutting pliers, snip the zip tie that routes the fuel line. For this method, we do not need to disconnect the vent or overflow hoses as we are not going to fully remove the tank. Grasp the fuel tank near the rear mounting bracket and the front edge and slide the tank rearward. Only lift the rear of the tank 2 to 3 inches to avoid damage to the air filter cover. Set the rear mounting tabs on the rear frame. This is where tension can occur on the fuel pump wiring or the fuel line if we had opted to attempt this without disconnecting them, although this is achievable with those still connected. Now with our tank moved out of the way, we can access our air filter. Get a soft cloth and place it over the front of your tank to help prevent any scuffs or dings. Loosen the three cover fasteners with a 10 mm socket and remove them carefully to avoid dropping them. The cover will have two zip ties routing the wiring harness. Snip those and remove them. You should now be able to pull away the cover and access the filter.
The filter will have two fasteners. Loosen these with a 4mm Allen wrench. To prevent dropping these into the bike, you do not need to remove these fasteners entirely. Approximately four full turns will allow the filter to be removed without fully disconnecting the fastener from the filter. You will see that I'm removing the same cleanable filter from the bike, and you may be wondering why I'm not simply cleaning that one for reuse. I find that having two of these allows for me to complete the filter replacement all at once, and then afterwards I'll clean and oil this filter for the next time. Now's a good time to inspect the area and clean any debris in the airbox. Install the new filter and fasten it down using the new screws and the 4mm Allen wrench. Now reinstall the cover. I find that it is easier to route the new zip ties before fastening it down with a 10mm socket. Once fastened down, you can tighten the zip ties and cut off the excess. When reinstalling the tank, you want to carefully reverse the motion utilized to remove it. Be careful not to pinch the fuel line, electrical wire, or vent and overflow lines. Once in place, we can lift the back of the tank just enough to confirm the routings are correct. You want the 90 degree fuel pump connector to face rearward. Reattach the fuel line to the harness using a zip tie. Reconnect your fuel pump electrical wire and tuck it safely under the tank. Now that this is complete, you can reposition the tank and align the mounting points. Reposition your grommets and reinstall the fasteners using a 6mm Allen wrench. Reconnect the ground line to the tank using a 10mm socket. Now that that's all done, we can reconnect the fuel line by pressing inward. You should hear a click once it's fully seated. Before starting the bike, turn the key and your kill switch to the on position. This will pressurize the system and will include a familiar sound to all of us. Check your fuel line area for any leaks. Make sure there isn't any fuel dripping onto the engine or remaining from any of the previous steps. If no leaks are found, start the bike and hit the road. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more Victory content.